News from City. Shanali, the latest bank reporting this morning. The news is that fixed income trading has fallen below expectations. You have Jane Fraser in the statement addressing the fixed income business high up in the release, saying that it is in line with where they were about a year ago. But remember, this is an extraordinarily competitive business on Wall Street right now. So the miss is not a great sign at a business that she is holding on strong to, trying to build, trying to be competitive with. Equities beat expectations. Investment banking fees have fallen below expectations, but revenue has fallen in line with expectations. One thing Jane Fraser did as soon as she got into City was reconsider where this bank needs to be, yeah. what the geographical global footprint is going to be. City's winding down all institutional banking services in Russia. We knew we were going in this direction. Shanae, do you think we've reset now enough at City that the decisions have been made where City wants to be and where it doesn't want to be? Uh, that's a <laughs> yes, yes. They have gotten out of a lot of businesses, and she has really shrunk this bank in a very significant way in the face of a lot of geopolitical headwinds in a year. So let's take that into consideration. They still have regulatory headwinds, which is why I don't want to say Citigroup is out of the woods. There's a reason they're trading so far far below their book value, and those regulatory headwinds are a big part of that, regardless of what's happening across the globe. What about loan loss provisions at a time when that was very much in focus at J.P. Morgan? Uh, we heard uh, some about that from Wells Fargo. Morgan Stanley was surprisingly light. Where is City on that? City is in line with expectations. There's two questions. We started to address it a little earlier. Provisions are going higher because people are reserving more because they're lending more. Is Citigroup's provisions now in line with expectations because they're lending Ending appetite is less than JP Morgan's, perhaps. What is their appetite to take on risk in this environment? I think is a critical question we're going to have to hear both the CFO answer when he speaks to journalists a little later this morning, as well as to analysts after.